Hello Targ, our friends. Hey everybody, it's Jason Blaha here. And once again, it's time for another Orc Mode workout. And today was Dynamic Effort Squat and Deadlift Day. Hardest day of the week for me, and it's my final training day before my two restoration days. Uh, just a quick reminder, if you guys enjoy these vlogs and watch them every day, please click like. Help me keep the likes higher than the dislikes due to that script these loser-ass clowns run. And if you guys would... Uh, Reach down and click like on my other videos I uploaded today. It would be greatly appreciated. Now, let's get over to the workout. Uh, I had to readjust all that. If you guys noticed, the bar went down another slot. I totally set my J-hooks in the wrong position. Mainly because, again, I'm using the buffalo bar and it needs to go a notch lower. You always want to have to squat the bar out of the J-hooks a little bit. Um, unlike the bench, which you want to have minimal travel, it's just easier if things get bad when you have to re-rack it. So I had to undo all of that and redo it after the first set. So at least I got a break because normally I take 60 seconds on these. But overall happy with um, with the way these went today. They were fatiguing but not as fatiguing as they sometimes feel. Um, I feel like I'm getting used to doing my ways with the bands over and over and over. I'm adapting to the bands. Um, which means obviously we, we never do the same workout twice. Uh, because in theory will be stronger every nine weeks, right? Because what am I doing? I'm going to use three different bars, and we run three-week three pendulum waves to where we increase the weight 5% more of my one rep max each week. So we start at 50, 55, 60, and then I add 25% band tension. Now, I actually have a hair more than that because I didn't have the exact amount, so I'm like five pounds over on band tension. That's okay, a little more band tension is not going to hurt anything. I would rather overshoot band tension on speed work than undershoot it, given a choice. Like, if I've got to pick which direction, oh, I'm five pounds off, no matter what I do, well, I'd rather be a hair heavy. Because my next combination down would have been 10 pounds light. Right? It would have been 10 pounds light, and that's not good. Better, better to be five pounds over. Now, of course, I could fine-tune that better if I grab that tiny little set of 15-pound mini bands and order them. I just can't be bothered. I can't be bothered. I've got four different band sets from Rogue, and I have enough combinations to work with. But sometimes it is 15-pound it is jumps, and that's okay. But we did 10 doubles today with 55% max with 25% max band tension. Now... You guys will notice the box height. I'm doing everything on an 11-inch box, and I know that's well below parallel, particularly when I keep my shins upright. Okay, particularly when the shins are upright and we sit back on the box. And people say, well, why is that? Because I, I actually have, um, at this point in my rotation, 20 different max box squats in, on the chart that you guys have seen. They're all off the 11-inch box. Now, if I were to use a 12-inch box also, I would have 40 different squats, wouldn't I? But I'm trying to do everything off an 11 inch box just like I'm doing all my pulling conventional now. I feel like I can develop all the strength I need for the sumo as far as the lower body goes doing wide stance box squats and doing my hip belt squats, right? I feel like that's all I need. Um, I can always go back and mess with sumo later, but I feel like just my, my adductor strength and all of that probably isn't quite strong enough to be as good on sumo as I am conventional. In other words, my back is probably just stronger than, than that part of my leg is. And so, therefore, I pull more conventional. And if I pull more conventional, it's what I need to use for speed work and everything else. Right? Because I need to get the most out of it. But I can build those weak muscles up with the box squat. And I always remind guys of that. The box squat done correctly will build your sumo deadlift. It is the best tool that we have. You know, we can argue that good mornings and other stuff build the conventional. Box squat builds sumo. And I might work some sumo back in eventually, you know, because I, I like to do a bit of both. And I think I took like nine months where I did zero conventional pulling and just worked sumo stuff. But no matter what I do, I'm always a little stronger conventional. And that's okay. It just has to do with our structures and, and muscle balance and everything. But being aware of that, that does tell me that I need to continue to work those muscles. And it's all lower body muscles, really. It's all lower body muscles. But at this point, I do have a little more upper body focus because my legs tend to grow really well. A lot of people point that out. Well, you're disproportionate. Your lower body is, is stronger and bigger than your upper body. And if we compare my bench, that's true. In terms of relative strength, my bench really needs to be 50 pounds stronger to be caught up to my squat and deadlift. 
And, and I admit that, which is why we're a little more bench specialized and upper body specialized these days, which you guys will see with today's workout. But the speed squatting, it went well. My technique was good. We set back, we exploded. And some people will say, well, should you be exploding slightly faster? Well, against the bands, not necessarily. Those bands really decelerate you when you hit that point. I'm fast off the box. But when you start hitting 130 pounds of band tension midway up, it does decelerate you a bit and you have to drive through that. And that's kind of the whole point. It's kind of the whole point. It's a little bit different of a beast. But if people doubt how hard I'm working, look how much of a sweat I'm breaking. I have the AC on and there is a fan blowing directly on me. There's a box fan blowing on me while I'm doing these. Okay. Speed work is hard. To me, this is more work. This is harder than max work. Max work is easy. Maxing out is easy compared to speed work. It's my opinion. And I'm not the only one who shares that opinion. I know some pretty strong guys who do. Uh, then we did one inch deficit speed pulls against bands. What are we doing here? Same thing. 55% one rep max for 10 singles. Now keeping in mind, this is off my deficit max, not my conventional max. Okay. My max conventional that you guys have seen on camera is 615. My max deficit is 575. So this is 315 on the bar with about 140 pounds of bands the way they're set up this way right people say well, isn't that 165 pounds of bands yeah if, if they're set up differently not this way it's, it's less the bands are, are less strong this way so even though that's 165 pounds of band sets it, it's different math when it's done like this so yeah it's a little bit less but these felt good and a lot of people ask why do you switch grips every time um for hypertrophy purposes as we do gain hypertrophy from speed work, we don't really get bigger off our max work. So I don't care particularly about um, imbalances. And even though that left bicep has been torn before and I always have some a little bit of inflammation and stuff in the tendons, I have to be aware of this. I'm always weaker on the other hand grip on it, by the way. It's harder. But I alternate it every time just for balance purposes so that we can avoid... Um, an imbalance and all the, any rep work or speed work you do where your deadlifts you should switch them back and forth now for your maxes obviously you want to use your strongest always your strongest grip which in my case is a left hand over right hand under okay so again difference between our, our speed or our volume training versus our maxes but again these went well also and these were really easy for me today uh, these were about 30 seconds apart I mean, we say up to a minute for speed work on stuff like this, but these are just singles on speed pulls. I, I can do them at 30 seconds. So I basically just walk over, turn the camera off, basically count 10 seconds in my head, return the camera back on, let it boot up, and then, you know, come back over. But it's not even really on and off. It's hitting the button. So it's, it's just about 10 seconds or so. And then if you figure setup time, time walking back and forth, it's probably about 30 seconds. But again, the same thing. It's enough work. I'm breaking a good sweat. I'm standing there in a, in a fan in an air-conditioned room wearing nothing but shorts and socks. Which, you know, that's the other thing. I have jackasses who say, oh, you're in your underwear. These are called men's running shorts. If you go to Amazon and you type in men's running shorts, right, you'll see my exact shorts there. I bought four pairs off Amazon. That, that's what they are. They're men's running shorts, guys. I don't know why people don't know what these are. Like, do you not know anything about what different workout clothing is? And mainly, it lets people see where I'm at year-round. No matter whether I'm bulking or cutting, nothing's hidden. You guys kind of see what I look like. No shame in my game. The only guy who does this, everyone else, well, they only want to have their shirt off when they look their best. Yeah, because they're a bunch of insecure fucking losers who get so tied up in their appearance that they'd be embarrassed to be seen when they're not their best. I mean, that's a loser-ass mentality. I tell you right there, that's somebody with no security. Lack of manhood. You guys can assess where I'm at year-round and figure out what you think my body fat is. You can see my loose skin. I don't care. And it saves me a hell of a lot of time washing clothes and doing laundry. Because, again, you see how sweaty I get in a pair of shorts. Um, just makes my life easier. It makes my life easier. I don't particularly like wearing clothes. 
All right, so people say, well, why are there no hip belt squats? Because uh, I wanted to PR on all my posterior chain stuff, and I realized, yes, I need more quads, but my quads are not the weakest link in my lifts. Do they need to grow? Yes. Can I get that off of hip belt squats once a week really hard for PRs? Yes. I get plenty of quad volume on this day. All that speed work, quads are getting worked. I need to make sure I'm hitting my, my real weak points. So I hit my previous PR, which was a gold number, on this again today, and it was hard. 225 for three sets of 10 with the safety squat bar on those, it's, it's tough. Like that was a challenging weight for me, and I, I know I need to get stronger. Some people will see guys out there go, I can do more than that. Well, hey, good for you. I can't. I'm going to work on it. I want to get to like 275, right? Maybe 315. Who knows? But I need to keep PRing. So I'm going to see if I can microload from here. If I have to use my fractional plates, I will use my little fractional plates and see if I can build up. As long as we're moving forward, and if we can't, I'm going to have to switch bars. Okay. Even though this is the bar I feel like I get the most out of because my upper back needs to work. If I have to switch bars to keep progressing, that's what I'll do and then come back to it. I have two different bars. Other bars I can do. I can do an Olympic bar. I can do my Cambridge bar. Which next week we're going to test the cambered bar for max box squats. That'll be interesting. Yes, it won't be random because I need to get a baseline for it. So that's going to be interesting because I've never done it before. I've squatted with it empty just to get a feel for it. And I feel like I have a feel for it. I'll take that thing up to a max to get a baseline. See where we're at. But we got our three sets of 10 on this again today, and I'll try to microload it up from here. But I wanted to hit that goal weight on the reverse hyper, which I got easily, which it surprised me. It really surprised me how easy it turned out to be. Because I remember when 330 was really, really difficult. So now I'm like, well, where do I need to go next? And we'll, do, we'll talk about that when we get there. But we pushed everything, pushed everything hard today. And again, I realized I needed more upper back. So it's like, well, let's do our inverted rows and do shrugs again. All right. I need more upper back. I need more trap. I need grip. This stuff will keep my deadlift moving. So I went with my 7-inch again today. But we got three sets of 12 on this today with the 7-inch elevation. So if I'm getting sets of 12 and I'm supposed to be getting 10, we need to go another inch up. All right. I'll go 8 inches next time. We keep stacking that height up. I have infinite numbers of these these squares. You know, I don't know, at a certain point, I guess, when I get it inverted so high, and I can still get 10 plus, and we'll just go for reps from there. But this is a great exercise, and if I keep getting stronger at it and keep getting better and better at um, getting getting it higher and higher up for these inverted rows, get them more and more elevated, then we're, we're PRing, right? We're getting stronger. It's doing what I needed to do. Building my lats, building my upper back, building my rear delts. Um, and, and I've started doing a lot more band pull-aparts and stuff on off days. In fact, after this, I'm going to do a bunch of hanging leg raises and maybe some band pull-aparts. Just because, again, more, more core strength, uh, more rear delt. But the shrugs, I went ahead and added 10 more. This is in 275. I put a 5 on each side. Put an extra nickel on there. And did my shrugs. You know, I get some guys who are like, why don't you do them straight up? I'm like, because my neck gets in the way. I guess if you don't have traps. But I care more about building the whole trap, not just the upper trap. I want the mid trap and everything to grow. This is an upper back exercise. So I want to get a good range of motion. I want to squeeze at the top and get as much trap involved as I can. All right? It's not just about the squeezing my neck together. And I wanted to work my grip. But some guys are like, why don't you strap up? Because this is extra grip training. Grip, grip, grip. I've been doing a lot of grip specialization in the last few months. You know, and it helped me tremendously. I started doing it late last year. I need more grip. How am I going to get to a 700-pound deadlift without as much grip work as I can do? Now, you can never have a grip that's too strong. This is extra grip work. And if I can grip it, then why not? And if people say, well, what if your grip becomes a limiting factor on shrugs? Well, then, then I need to get my weak-ass grip up. That's what I need to do. I need to keep doing grip training until it gets better and it can handle it. 
right? That is, again, such a lazy ass, cop out ass bitch excuse. Well, I don't want my grip to be my limiting factor. Well, train your weak ass grip. Right? Train your weak ass grip. Like, is there any scenario to where your grip could ever be too strong? I mean, think about that. Why wouldn't you want to have just a crushing grip? The mark of a man. It'll make you better at other endeavors, not just the deadlift. I mean, if you guys take up any sort of various thing, there's a lot of different endeavors out there. Maybe you guys get into to some sort of martial arts where you need to grapple or something. You know what? Grip strength would be very, very beneficial for that. If you could triple your grip strength, you don't think that would help with, with grappling? All right. Grip is useful. Train the hell out of it. If your grip's a limiting factor, then you're not training your grip enough. And there might be points where I disagree. I might mess with some stuff. Have to mess with some maxing with some straps eventually with certain things. And that's okay. I'll worry about that when I get there. In the meantime, if my grip is ever a limiting factor on anything right now, it means I'm not doing enough grip work. I need to keep building it. Keep building it. But over to these... 425. This is a goal. We had set months ago. We set that goal based on Darden's math. That if I want a 650 deadlift, I need to be able to take 65% of my deadlift goal and do five sets of 25 on the reverse hyper with it. Well, we reached it. We did it today. And, and it wasn't that hard. This was easier than when I was doing 300s, low 300s with the same reps. This was easier. I'm adapting to it. I mean, it felt good. Obviously, I got a hell of a pump through my low back and glutes and hamstrings. You know, it, it has a, a profound effect. But it's just not that challenging now. It's not that challenging. So what do we, what do, we do now? So I guess we get to 500. All right, let's, let's work up. Let's set a new goal, okay? We were at like 300 or something when I, I added that. 125 pounds. Well, this is, isn't that bad. All right, let's work up to 500 pounds. 500. That sounds good. Okay. It's going to be limits to what I can load on this machine, though. The max it holds is 700, and I don't have enough calibrated plates to get too much higher past 500 because I've got to start stacking those big, thick 55s on. You know, I mean, I mean, realistically speaking, I don't know I can get much more than 500. But let's 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 look at it from that perspective. If I'm doing 500 for sets of 25 on there, am I really getting anything further? I mean, it's pretty ridiculous. Um, my low back and glutes have got to be strong at that point. So you know, let's set that as the next goal. Okay, well, we shot this year, 500, 500. Time we reach a goal, we go for another one. Just like, just like on those good mornings. Well, my next goal is to get to 275 for sets of 10 on some type of good morning. Maybe not the safety bar. It might be one of my other bars. Whatever bar, any bar. Let's get to 275 for sets of 10 on that. Let's get to 500 on this reverse hyper for sets of 25. We have to get stronger at our supplemental work. Okay? Especially stuff like this that builds all of our support musculature. Right? Stuff that builds our low back, our glutes. You can never be too strong at these things. These, those muscles can never be too strong or too well developed. We keep moving forward. All right, guys, well, that's really all I have to say on that today. I hope it's been informative, and I will talk to you guys next time.